Okay, so now we have vectors and vector spaces. The first of these fundamental ideas, uh, I guess that in this chapter, that we have to uh, learn at the beginning of this course are vectors and vector spaces. What is a vector? You may already have some idea from your previous courses. In physics, maybe a vector is something with a magnitude and direction, e.g. a force or a displacement. In first year math, maybe a vector is an element of Rn that follows certain rules. These definitions are not wrong, but they are very narrow. We are going to introduce a much broader, more general definition, which encompasses the answers above and includes other useful objects. So it's a definition. We call the set V equals U, V, W, and so on, a vector space, and its elements of vectors if we can combine any two vectors U and V through addition to produce a new vector U plus V. That is, V must be closed under addition, i.e. the result U plus V must also be an element of V. Two, we can multiply any element U by a scalar alpha to produce a new vector, alpha U. That is, V must be closed under scalar multiplication, i.e. the result alpha U must also be an element of V. Okay, so we say that the set V is a vector space. V equals U, V, W. So I write underlined instead of bold. Let's see, don't have to write bold. Um, if, if you have U and V elements of V, then U plus V is also an element of V. And then also, if we have a scalar alpha, well we have, so we have U in V, and we have a scalar alpha, then alpha times U is in V. Okay. So it's closed under scalar closed under addition, vector addition, and closed under scalar multiplication. The uh, question is, what is a scalar? Well, here it says, the scalars we use for multiplication are often, but not always, the real numbers. Most of the facts and explanations that we provide in this course will default to using the reals, even though this comes at the expense of generality. Um, what are some other possibilities other than the reals? The main possibility is that instead of being the reals, it could be the complex numbers. That's the most interesting and useful alternative. There are other alternatives, but they are not really of interest as far as that, no, not even not really of interest to this course or to different or to applications and differential equations. But complex numbers having the scale of being complex numbers, that is very interesting. So this alpha over here, it could be an element of the reals or it could be that it's an element of the complex numbers. So in fact, what happens is that when you give a vector space, you say what the scalars are. You say the scalars are real numbers or you say the scalars are complex numbers or something else. But real numbers, complex numbers, those are the two things we're going to look at in this course. Okay, now, continuing. Let's consider some concrete examples of vector spaces. In each example, we will first introduce a set, then check that we can add the elements of that set and multiply the elements of the set by scalars. And finally, that the set is closed under those operations. If this is the case, then the set is a vector space. So the first example is R3, or more generally Rn. And this is an example we've definitely seen, we've definitely seen before, right? So R3 is all those triples of real numbers. And you can, how do you add elements? You can add elements in this set by adding the components of each vector, and you can multiply a vector by a scalar by multiplying each of the components by a scalar. And in, in maths, that's what these, these things, this is what it means to add. So if you have a u and you have a v that are in R3, it's in R3 because it's u1, u2, u3, a triple. And in this course, by the way, we are going to try and always write vectors vertically. So just get into the habit of doing that, it makes it things easier for, multi for matrix multiplication and stuff. And V1, V2, V3, so two vectors in R3, then when you add them, you add each component individually, U1, 
plus v1, u2 plus v2, u3 plus v3. So, for example, oh, here's an example. These could be that these could be the numbers. It could be like u1 could be one, u2 could be six, u3 could be minus three, and you could have five zero two as v, and then add them together, you get one plus five, six plus zero, minus three plus two is minus one, right? And the point is that this u plus v, this u is in v. It, well, the v is called r three in this case. This v is also in r three because it's a triple of numbers. And this u plus v, that's also a triple of numbers, right? So it's also in R3. It's a triple of numbers because you add each, each component, and when you, add, when you add two components together, you just get a real number, right? So it's in R3. So then that's the vector addition, and there's a scalar multiplication. So again, you have... Now, here the scalar, since it's... Since it's r to the 3, the scalars are real numbers, as they will usually be, like I said. Sometimes, and sometimes it's useful to think of them as complex, to think of complex scalars. Oh, sorry about that. And now here we have, we have, we take a u in r3 and a scalar in r. You do alpha times u, and how do you do that? You multiply each individual component. And then, because when you multiply a real number by a real number, you get a real number, the result is still in R3. So, the natural example of it, u being 1, 6, 3, and then alpha being 3, and then you have, you know, this is, this is 3 times 1, this is 3 times 6, and this is 3 times minus 3. Okay. So, now it says we can show that Rn is a vector space similarly. Okay, so whenever you come across something like that, we can do that, we can do this, we can do this, we should just go ahead and try and do it. So how will we show that Rn is a vector space? Okay, so what is Rn, first of all? Rn, it's all those triple, all those n-tuples, they're called n-tuples of numbers, of, uh, yeah, n-tuples of numbers. So and have x1, x2, and so on, x3, x4, all the way to xn, okay, where each of those x, each of those things, uh, x1 to xn, those are all real numbers, okay? That's what r to the n is. That's what rn is. Now we want to say, we want to take a, two vectors. How do they do it here? How do we do it here? Ah, interesting. Incidentally, you can name it, you can say xi is the element of r instead of actually naming the, the things individually. So let me do that rather. Instead of saying x1 to xn is an r, I'll say it's when xi is an r, and then it's, it's assumed that the xi could be, that the i could be 1, 2, or anything until n. Okay. So that's our n. Then what we did was to show this a vector space, we took two vectors in it and added them together and got a third vector, which was also an r3. So let's do that. So, you take u, which is, maybe we'll, which we'll call, we can call that u1 to un in rn, okay? So that means that u1, u2, and all these, they are, they are in, um, they're real numbers, uh, v1 to vn, each v1, each vi is a real number. Now you look at u plus v, what do you get? You add it component-wise, right? u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2, and so on, un plus vn. But when you add real numbers to real number, you get real numbers. So this thing there is also an n tuple of real numbers. It's a vector in Rn. So that shows that Rn is closed under the tradition. So let's do a similar thing for scalar multiplication. We take a scalar. So in this case, the scalars are real numbers. And you take u and rn, which I'm not going to bother to write again because we already have it up there, u and rn, and we look at what is alpha times u. Well, it's, it's alpha times this vector u1 to un. And how do you do that? You multiply each component by the alpha, 
And because when you multiply a real number by a real number, you get a real number, the result is still a list of n, of list of n real numbers, an n tuple of real numbers, so an element, a vector in Rn. Okay. Now it says, so we've done this. We have, we have shown over here that Rn is a vector space. At this point, you might start thinking that all sets are closed under any operation. After all, it seems so obvious for vector addition and scalar multiplication. This is not true. The dot product u dot v combines two vectors but gives a scalar as a result. So R3 is not closed under the dot product. So what is the dot product? It's when you go, you have u and v, two vectors. If you're going to dot u1, so now we're working in R3, right? That's the example they gave. You take those two vectors, you dot them, what you get? You get u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 plus u3, whoops, u3 times v3, okay? And the point is that that is, a, that is not a vector. So that is not in R3. It's a number. It's just a number. So R3 is not closed under the dot product. Cool. I mean, we give a concrete example, right? It could be like you take 1, 6, minus 3, you dot it with, say, 1, 0, 1, you get ah, 1, 0, 2. You get 1 times 1, which is 1, plus 6 times 0, which is 0, then minus 3 times 2, which is minus 6, so that's minus 5. It's a number, right? It's not an element of R3, it's an element of R. So R3, that's a counterexample to show that R3 is not closed under the dot product. And I think for the next example, I will go to another video.